The hot sun bears down on the large Jurassic forest that is made even hotter by the nearby volcano that on occasion rumbles the earth for kilometres around. However, the hot weather suits reptiles well, and the forest is full of them, especially the dinosaurs. One species in particular is working extra hard this time of year. This unique creature lives below the forest canopy, soaring from tree to tree and occasionally running across the forest floor. From a distance, it looks a bit like a bird with arms and a tail, and up close, it looks like a feathered lizard, but it is neither. This is Microraptor, a fascinating missing link from a time when dinosaurs were becoming birds. This female is busy looking for food, but not just for herself. She, her mate, and every other mated pair are searching every part of the forest in order to feed their newly hatched young. Half the ancient jungle is alive with the chatter of dozens of microraptors as they jump from tree to tree, spreading out their wings and legs to glide on specifically adapted feathers swiftly to the next tree. They have to be wary, though. Other microraptors that may steal their food are the least of their worries. Small predators stalk the undergrowth or larger ones stand tall enough to snatch the small dinosaurs out of mid-air. But very few of them have the ability to chase them in the trees, or pursue them if they make a jump. Their size, simple wings, and expertise in the trees means that the canopy is mostly theirs. The female, having gathered a mouthful of insects, returns to her nest, a simple hole in a conifer tree lined with leaves. Inside, her brood of six infants is waiting for her. They immediately begin to chirp expectantly, pushing each other out of the way in order to get fed. She gives each one of them a mouthful of insects, which they greedily swallow. Her mate arrives moments later with a lizard in his jaws. Instead of feeding it to them, the male drops the dead reptile at the infant's feet and allows them to try and get at it. Although they are born with teeth and claws, the infants struggle to get past the lizard's scales. This will at least keep them busy till their parents get back with more food and may stop them from fighting amongst each other. Like modern birds of prey, it was not uncommon for Microraptor's siblings to kill each other. The female jumps off the tree and glides effortlessly down to another, her sharp claws easily grasping the bark and securing her landing. She hears scurrying below her. Looking down with her keen eyes, she sees a small shrew-like mammal quickly darting down the tree, clearly startled by her landing. She instantly gives chase, the two of them racing towards the forest floor. She knows it is dangerous down there, but it was a risk she is willing to take. As the tiny mammal reached the surface, it continued to run along the flat ground. Its pursuer leapt from the tree, briefly extending her wings and then flapped them back, diving headfirst at her prey. The mammal never even saw her coming. With one bite, she killed the unfortunate prey and quickly got to her feet, scanning the area. She was below the undergrowth, where even the sun's rays struggled to reach. As she scanned around, she nearly froze, as she had landed nearly face to face with a larger predator, an infant Sinotyrannus. Though nowhere near the size of an adult, the young predator was already twice her size, and three times her weight. The Microraptor spun and ran back for the tree, having gone from being the hunter to the hunted. The Sinotyrannus was faster on the ground, however, and as she tried to climb the tree, its sharp teeth grabbed onto the tip of her tail. It had mostly gotten a mouthful of feathers, but it still had a grip on her. The female held on tight with her hands and feet, but there was no way she was going to be able to overpower the larger predator. She had one thing on her, though. The small mammal still locked in her jaws. With no other option but to gamble, she dropped the mammal's body over her shoulder, and the Sinotyrannus reacted without thinking. The hunter let go of his target and snatched the dead animal out of the air as it fell, giving the Microraptor just enough time to scurry away, losing some feathers and a bit of blood. The infant Sinotyrannus watched as his intended target bound up the tree, before scoffing back what smaller prize he had obtained. The female Microraptor paused for a minute to catch her breath, and then when her heart rate had gone down to a normal level, continued her hunt. She had to feed her brood for another three weeks, at which point they would be out of the nest and exploring the tree they were born in. After that, they would be on their own, free to glide and soar the ancient forest, just like their parents. 
Hello everyone and welcome back to the show. Today we will be breaking down one of the smallest dinosaurs ever to have existed, Microraptor. Microraptor was a small carnivorous dromaeosaur from the early Cretaceous period. Found in Lianon, China, Microraptor is one of the most commonly found species in that area, with up to 300 possible specimens discovered. There may have been three unique species of Microraptor, However, some scientists believe that these are the same species at different stages of growth. Microraptor grew between 77 centimeters to 1.5 meters in length, and weighed around 1 kilogram. The most remarkable thing about Microraptor was its four wings, one on each arm and one on each leg. Because of this, it has long been debated whether it could glide or fly. Originally, it was believed that it used its four wings to glide around the forest it lived in, or even parachuted to the ground to ambush prey. Through a lot of study, it is believed by some scientists that it was indeed capable of powered flight, just not to the same effectiveness that modern-day birds fly. In fact, the feathers on its limbs would have made it rather awkward on the forest floor, as the length of them meant that they would have been most likely dragged along the ground as the animal walked. It also had feathers running down the full length of its tail, which ended in a fan-like shape, with two long protruding feathers. Believe it or not, scientists were even able to discover the color of its feathers. Using enhanced scanning techniques, it was found that Microraptor had a black, glossy, iridescent plumage, similar to that of a starling or even a crow. This also helps promote the idea that Microraptor was active during the day, as no nocturnal birds have iridescent plumage. With the range of fossils available, we know a great deal about what Microraptor ate. One fossil showed that it had eaten a small mammal. Another had eaten a lizard. Another had swallowed a small bird. More specifically, it had swallowed a tree-perching bird whole. Even more fascinating was when fish scales were found in one specimen's abdominal cavity. This alone raises many questions. Did it scavenge the fish from another predator? Did it snatch fish from the shallows like a heron? Could it catch fish on the wing like an eagle? This one is unlikely given its four-winged way of flying. Or did it dive from rocks into the water and then dry its wings out like a cormorant? That last one is just one of my own fun ideas. I have no evidence for it, just for the record. Whatever the reason, it shows that Microraptor was an opportunistic hunter with a wide range of prey and clearly had the skill to go off the quick and agile targets. The Yingfo Tang formation that Microraptor was discovered in is a gold mine for fossils, ranging from small ceratopsins to theropods and dozens of different pterosaur species. Most notably, it contains countless bird species, many of which look astonishing like modern birds though many still had remnants from their dinosaur cousins, such as teeth or tails. In this ancient forest, you could see a bird that looks like a kingfisher, then another that looks like a turkey with teeth, then you would see Microraptor, and finally a feathered relative of T-Rex. So, Microraptor, a unique dinosaur from a unique point in time. And fortunately, we know a great amount about it and the area it lived in from the mass of fossils discovered. It is one of those dinosaurs that would have been a wonder to see alive, even if it was just to confirm that it could indeed fly by its own power. Honestly, I'd think it would make a great pet too. It's the combination of having four wings and its varied diet that draws me to Microraptor, and all the thoughts and theories that comes from it, like how it managed to hunt with such intrusive feathers, to my cormorant theory. But what do you think of Microraptor? Are you as drawn to it as much as I am, or do you believe that four wings were never going to work? What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to cover in a future episode? Until next time, remember to always value your uniqueness.